Good afternoon, this is Jim Lanky with news and announcements for St. John, Kansas, and Max Hill on cable channel 3 and on sandylandcenter.org, our website. And uh, since we're, we're doing a whole week's worth of news, we try to have a week's worth of weather as well. So today is the 27th of July, it's Wednesday, 98 at noontime. We're looking for a sunny day today with 108 for the high temperature. And that should be the highest temperature for the week. <coughs> then on uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, both days, we have a 30% chance of a scattered thunderstorm. Now, we've had a lot of 30% chance of storms, and none of them ever happened. But in that case, but we'll still tell you it's a 30% chance of a thunderstorm on Thursday and Friday, 104 on Thursday, and 97 on uh, Friday for the high temperature. And the, that 97 is the low temperature for the week. And then we go to Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and they are all sunny. 100 Saturday, 102 Sunday, and 101 on Monday. And then partly cloudy back to 100 on Tuesday, and then we wind up with partly cloudy on next Wednesday, uh, 97 again, which is tied with the low temperature for the week. <coughs> for uh, birthdays and anniversaries, uh, Brenda Martin, a happy birthday today, and Everett and Joe Carroll Hudson, happy anniversary. Uh, Thursday, a uh, happy birthday to Phyllis uh, Staub and to Marita Fox. On Friday, uh, Darlene Bartlett, happy birthday, and Esther Staub, happy birthday. Saturday, Carol and Mix, happy birthday. Sunday, Kim Brown, happy birthday. None on Monday, and then happy birthday to Tyler Clark and Dawn and Susanna Heldebrand, uh, happy anniversary. <coughs> Well, we had a lot of events happen uh, this week. The, uh, on uh, Friday, <coughs> the Science Museum had uh, around uh, 61 uh, young people, uh, they're probably mid-school age, uh, YMC, from the YMCA in Hutch, and about seven staff members from the YMCA. And they had quite a time at the Science Museum Friday. Uh, the kids all were just really excited about it and very interested in the exhibits. And the day just seemed to be too short for them all. Of course, uh, they got there a little late. Uh, and they had to leave on their regular time. So uh, they didn't get as much as they wanted, but that's good because uh, then they got a good reason to come back and see the rest of the great things at the St. John Science Museum. They had around seven staff people, and so it was quite a busy day over there in that corner of the square uh, at the Science Museum. <coughs> and then on uh, Saturday, uh, Chief Sonny Ralston, with uh, help from volunteers from the Community Involvement Committee, and many other just individual volunteers had a great youth night here in the square Saturday. Uh, there were over, <coughs> over 60 young people. Uh, there were about a dozen uh, people from high school age, and there were about eight volunteer adults. Uh, and uh, so the chief uh, events were a basketball uh, set of games going on in the, uh, the west side of the square on 4th uh, Avenue and, uh, and they, well actually 3rd Avenue, on the west side of the square they had basketball and the high school folks were pretty much playing that. And in the east side uh, they had the younger people with water balloons having water balloon fights and that's a good thing to do on a hot Saturday. Uh, they had lots of hot dogs and they had a big uh, sort of a little swimming pool thing filled with ice and pop for people to take as they needed. And it was really quite a great event in the city for the young people. And uh, it's good for them to have some uh, celebrations before they get 
trapped with school coming up very quickly next month. So again, uh, thank you to Chief Sonny Ralston and the volunteers that come out. And there have been several uh, anonymous uh, individual contributors who have uh, donated quite a bit uh, to help out with that uh, weekend for the young people. And I think they're trying to have one more uh, before school starts, but I don't have the exact information about that. <coughs> then uh, just an item of, of news, uh, I noticed on the city's website that they're going to have a special meeting August 9th at 7 o'clock, and it's the annual uh, budget hearing meeting to which nobody goes, or at least nobody had been in the 12 years that I was there. Uh, to come to that budget hearing, hearing, but it's a requirement. And they're also going to consider uh, waiving the 120 foot regulation of distance between uh, an establishment that has a malt beverage license and a church or a school or educational organization. And uh, this is going to be for uh, Pueblo Nuevo and uh, to grant them a malt beverage uh, license, I guess they're closer than 120 feet because they want to waive uh, the regulation. And I'm a little concerned because I know that they already did this and uh, took a vote and so on. And so I'm wondering what sort of uh, violations of the law or open meeting uh, things that happened that caused them to have to reschedule this meeting and uh, do it over again. So uh, if you have uh, concerns about waiving the 120-foot regulation between uh, churches, schools, and uh, establishments that serve beverages, uh, maybe you need to call City Hall or attend the meeting, uh, the special meeting, and let the city know your opinion. I'm kind of uh, disappointed that they did this in a way that doesn't seem to be appropriate, and uh, it would be too bad. It's too bad that if they were going to do that, that they, they didn't do it right in the first place. So you wonder why didn't they do it right in the first place. Well, that's just uh, my take on it, because I wasn't at that meeting. And, uh, so I don't know exactly. I know I watched part of it, didn't understand it. All right. <coughs> well, we go on with even more important news, and that's the menus. So we do have lots of menus for Maxville. Uh, they're having barbecued pork and peas today, uh, chuck wagon steak and potato wedges on Thursday, sweet and sour chicken and steamed rice on Friday. And then on Monday, baked ham, on Tuesday, Salisbury steak, and next Wednesday, when we'll have our next news, they'll be having spaghetti and meat sauce. We only have the last of this week uh, for the uh, Wit Center and the Fellowship meal there. And they're having oven fried chicken today, and mashed potatoes, turkey and noodles, and green beans, and tomato salad uh, tomorrow. And on Friday, steak, teriyaki, rice, mixed vegetables, cranberry salad, and dessert. And so that's really the most important news for seniors. And uh, we hope that seniors will partake of that because uh, that's a great deal on uh, the fellowship meal. And then I have uh, two press releases uh, from uh, Steve Moody. And that's that uh, on uh, July 22nd, uh, they had uh, an unusual set of events. They had a medical emergency in the city of Maxville first, and the Maxville crew responded. While the Maxville call was underway, we received the second call. Stafford Hospital needed an emergency transfer to Great Bend, and the Stafford crew responded. And the third call came while both the Maxville and Stafford crews were still tied up. A motorist hit a deer on Highway 281, and the St. John crew responded. Uh, two of the medics that weren't even on call heard the traffic on the radio and stepped forward to assist. Uh, 
So they had uh, back to back to back, three things in a row. <coughs> it was quite a challenge. And the Stafford County medics uh, performed beautifully Thursday night. And so we join uh, Steve in congratulating uh, the medics and the crew on the job well done under unusual circumstances. <coughs> Another uh, news release is uh, titled Farmer to the Rescue. While they were fighting a fire in the southeast, uh, near the southeast county line, uh, something unusual happened. And that's that one of the larger trucks was making its way back to the road and it had a uh, they looked in the mirror and noticed that the bed was cockeyed, and it turned out that as they hit a bump or something, all the bolts had sheared off uh, that was holding uh, the trailer onto the, uh, the framework. <coughs> so the truck was out of commission. Nobody was hurt, but uh, one of the local firefighters saw uh, Farmer Larry Zink, who was running a bailing machine in a nearby field, and they asked him, and he volunteered, uh, brought his tractor over, uh, tip, tipped the, the injured uh, bed of the truck that was unbolted uh, so that the bolts could be lined up and new bolts were installed. And so uh, we want to thank Larry Zink and people in the community like Larry uh, who help out whenever there's a problem. And this is the kind of uh, uh, county we have where uh, neighbors help out uh, neighbors uh, when they can. And uh, these are all the announcements for you. I have uh, some video that will be at the end of, uh, of the news after we uh, say goodbye. And uh, that will show uh, some of the folks at, uh, at the uh, Science Museum uh, from last Friday. Well, the, uh, the word of the day is this. Uh, comes at an interesting time. Uh, the quickest way to get people interested in something is to tell them it's none of their business. And so I would remind uh, the city that, uh, that people are going to be very interested in things that don't seem to be our business. This is Jim Lakey. Stay tuned uh, for the Science Museum uh, parts that we have. Don't wave. Don't smile. I can see you're not smiling. What's that? That's not not smiling. Did you have fun today? Yeah. Did you learn anything? Yes. Yeah. Did you get to be on the side where the sparks were made, or did you get to be on the side where you get to ride the bicycles and spin in circles? I was on the side. Well, are you going to come back and see us again?